Let's start with saying that implementing effective CI-CD pipelines is not prescriptive, meaning it will rarely look exactly the same across organizations. But there are some key features and a process driven by maturity that applies somewhat universally. CI-CD is an often misunderstood and ambiguous term, so let's start with some definitions. The CI stands for Continuous Integration, and it's a development practice where developers frequently integrate their code changes into a shared repository, often multiple times a day, which then triggers automation to ensure quality. The key principles of continuous integration are this frequent integration. You wanna merge code changes to a central repository frequently, often multiple times a day, as I said, but the idea is to reduce conflicts caused by long-lived branches. From there, you want automated build and test. Minimally, each commit will trigger automation to compile the code and execute automated tests, often more, but that's minimal. CI pipelines often include static code analysis, code style checks, or code smells, and we're enforcing coding standards to identify potential issues. The CD part of CI-CD is also somewhat ambiguous and often misunderstood. In fact, there's two terms that are used for CD that are actually quite different continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Continuous delivery is an extension of CI where we add a release stage to the process. So after changes are automatically built and tested, the things we just talked about with continuous integration, the deployment to a pre-production environment then is also automated. There are some key principles to continuous delivery. The first is having production-like environments. We want to ensure consistent behavior across different stages of the pipeline and therefore we need consistent environments. But the goal is really deployment readiness, where we keep our software in a deployable state at all times. This allows teams to release changes to production quickly and confidently when needed. Essentially, we wanna reduce the ceremony of deployments and make them as trivial as possible. Continuous deployment then is an extension of continuous delivery that automates the deployment of changes to the production environment. So rather than the manual step described in continuous delivery, production releases will be automated. The key principle of continuous deployment is having incremental releases. We need small batches of changes that are deployed to production frequently. And the premise again is to reduce the risk that often comes with large infrequent deployments. There are many benefits to CICD. The first is reduced time to market. The goal is to respond quickly to market demands and customer feedback. And we want to improve stability. When done well, CICD focuses developers on code quality, reliability, and reducing the risk and ultimately the cost of production issues. Another benefit is flexibility, allowing changes to be released to production at a pace that aligns with the business objectives, the customer needs, and enterprise capabilities. The last point on this topic is integrating security within the process. Sometimes we call this DevSecOps, and it's an important thing to consider as well. The concept of security shifting left simply means that we want to address security concerns as early as possible in the development process. This is often done by automating security testing into the pipeline and can include things like static application security testing or SAST dynamic application security testing, or DAST, software composition analysis, sometimes called SCA, and container security scanning. But the goal is simply to identify and address vulnerabilities early in the development process and reduce the risk of security issues later down the road. To talk about this in more detail or any other topics, you can reach out to ask the team at keyholesoftware.com.